Yo, what is up ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Zethi here and I am back at it again to drop the full movie version and the rest of the series for what if Naruto had black air force energy. If you guys have been on the last three parts, then the finale that you guys are pretty much waiting for is just going to be the last like 25 to 27 minutes of the video is where the rest of what if Naruto had black air force energy the part is. That's where the fourth part is going to be and the final installment. The rest of this is just going to be a compilation of the previous parts and with that being said that's pretty much what's going to be in the video hope you guys go on to enjoy the video but just to let you guys know this is going to be a sponsored one so halfway into the video you guys will be seeing a sponsorship little uh in the video but with that being said i hope you guys go on to enjoy the video so uh let's get right into the what if Okay, so we're going to be starting our story off in the way that many of you guys are probably expecting. Of course, we're going to be starting off with Naruto's birth. See, in this version of events, there's going to be some major minor, some major slash minor changes. The really minor one is basically just going to be that Naruto is not exactly going to look like himself. In this version of events, I am going to have Naruto take a little bit after Mikey. Now, he is low-key, not gonna lie, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you guys gonna have my gonna pretty much be mikey's reincarnation god i can't talk today but yeah he's kind of gonna be mikey's reincarnation that being said it with being mikey's reincarnation comes the darkness and the strength that comes with being mikey himself and of course in a story of like where kids basically beat each other up in middle school that doesn't really seem that overpowered but when you add that black air force energy and savagery that mikey has it definitely is going to be making for a very interesting story in the world of naruto not only that but when naruto was born minato kushina and everybody in the room feels a dark presence as soon as naruto is born they feel a presence of simple power it's just a bunch of power emanating off of naruto because for some reason naruto is just going to have this aura to him that just emanates sheer strength power just complete like just destruction i guess you could say he has an aura of if i had to sum it up in one word it's literally just destruction or a menace <laughs> No, but all seriousness though, yeah, Naruto is in fact going to be born with Black Air Force energy off rip. That being said, Heruzen in this version of events is actually going to semi keep his promise because when Naruto's parents die inevitably because Minato still going to end up losing his life in the Nine Tails incident and Kushina is still basically going to sacrifice herself for Naruto, after that... Well, Haruzen ends up getting Naruto. However, when he does, he realizes that same aura that Minato and Kushina were able to feel. And this would cause Haruzen to actually take into into more of an account what naruto's training is going to be like because he can just feel the overwhelming power that's coming off of naruto at just the at just the age of an infant i mean the man has literally not even been one day old and the man is already just letting off this aura of straight just not okay all right that that's the best way i can summon it up all right the man is a menace bro the man is a menace all right that being said though yeah naruto is basically going to end up actually kind of being raised properly by haruzen of course he's not going to start him off with training immediately because it's like naruto is a literal kid so we're going to be having a little bit of a four-year time skip where naruto's kind of just going to grow up alongside haruzen he's going to feed him you know all that good stuff and when naruto gets to the age of four he's not actually going to throw naruto into his own house making him fend for himself no instead haruzen is actually going to be taking the time out of his day to train naruto and be his personal trainer because as the days went on naruto slowly was just bored of course, Haruzen was teaching him things like manners and reading and writing and all that stuff. And just like everything pretty much our canon Naruto learns up until the age of four is what he would be learning. Naruto at this point would have his hair cut short, similar to what Mikey did in elementary school, except 
He's going to be about four years old. And yeah, that's pretty much going to be what Naruto's look like. Another my major change to the story. I really said major, but yeah, major change to the story is basically going to be that Danzo is not actually going to be knowing about Naruto being the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. Now, there's not exactly going to be some crazy convoluted reason as to why he doesn't know, simply being he never asked. So Hiruza never just sat there and said, yeah, Naruto's the Nine Tails. All right. So that's pretty much it. All right. That being said, though, for the next following years, four to be exact, meaning we are going to be having a four year time skip. Naruto is going to be training with Hiruzen in Taijutsu alone, meaning a little bit of chakra control and basic stuff, along with training in Taijutsu, basically to empower himself, similar to, um, you know, basically what they all do. You know, they use their chakra to hit harder and stuff like that. Pretty much what Sakura does. That's pretty much what Naruto trains with when it comes to chakra, meaning he probably knows how to, you know, water walk and tree walk. He also is going to end up learning a couple jutsus because he's, of course, going to be training alongside Hiruzen. However, he's not really going to be too overpowered in the sense of chakra control or any of that stuff. What Naruto's mainly going to be having as his main, well, combat thing is his ability to throw hands. The man is going to have, like, very very good taijutsu skills not only that but naruto is going to be a fighter who likes to use his feet he likes to do a bunch of kicking attacks and leg styles when it comes to his fighting style think mikey from uh tokyo revengers when it comes to what naruto's fighting style is going to be and his main move is going to be this rapid kick which pretty much slams people's heads right into the concrete so yeah naruto very very powerful to say the least that being said, one day during their training, when Naruto is about eight years old, Hiruzen would basically just be there as, of course, this is why, you know, Naruto and Hiruzen would basically be sparring and Donzo would actually end up arriving with some news for the Hokage. When he arrives, he ends up noticing that Hiruzen is training Naruto. Now, Hiruzen isn't exactly training him out in the open where everybody can see, so the only real person that knows about this is Donzo. So when he sees this, he would ask why he's training this kid and Hiruzen would explain to him well he's the son of minato and kushina and donzo would be shocked not only that but he would then add that naruto is the jinchuriki of the nine tails plus he has a lot of power within him immediately donzo would get a smirk on his face thinking that maybe maybe just maybe he can get naruto on his side get naruto to join the anbu and then he could take over the village with the power of the nine tails this thought would go straight through his head and this is when he would basically snitch on naruto he would end up telling everybody in the village that naruto was the nine tails in Cherokee, and after this Naruto's life would change, going to that of a Naruto's life which was when he was 4 years old. Because everybody ended up finding that out that Naruto was the Jinchuriki at about 5 or 4 I believe, I'm not really too sure, but they basically all ended up finding out at around the same time. So yeah, a lot of people would end up finding out that Naruto's a Jinchuriki and a lot of people would end up disliking Naruto. However, a select few would end up respecting him because of Naruto's sheer power. Because it's not like Naruto simply went through this time and just never used his abilities or wasn't spreading around that, you know, that little black air force energy because yeah naruto does not take anything from anybody see one point at one point when it was around this winter time naruto ended up saving this girl by the name of hina to Hyuga. and we of course know the situation some bullies came in and when naruto told them to stop they immediately turned towards naruto and were like or what and afterwards Naruto proceeded to beat every single one of the bullies. All of them would run away crying home to their mothers. And when the parents actually tried to say something to Naruto, he pretty much ended up beating the dad's ass too. That being said, nobody was really able to test Naruto from an early age. By the time that he was five years old, nobody could really say anything to him. That being said, Hinata would of course get this admiration to Naruto, which isn't really going to last that long in this version of events because... I don't really think that Hinata would like to be with somebody who er emanates Air Force energy. So yeah, that being said though, this is when Naruto's life would of course begin to change a little bit. A bunch of people would start slowly hating Naruto, but a bunch of them would not really say anything because of the fact that they know what Naruto was capable of. One time, as soon as everybody found out about that stuff, Naruto went to his favorite uh, little... Sobu was so I don't know dude he went to his little his little you know food place that was close by right and so you know he walked inside however when he did the shop owner ended up d dumping the entirety of the bowl of of uh, no not ramen but whatever the food was on Naruto telling him to get out of his restaurant he's not gonna have the demon who murdered his kids his kid and a uh, wife in his shop and Naruto 
he's not going to take that lightly. Naruto would quite literally take off his jacket as he would put it on top of a chair and say, you know, I honestly never thought I was going to have to do this to you. As he would crack his arm and, you know, start cracking his elbows, uh, no, not elbows, but neck and hands. As he would then say, well, I guess I have to. He would blitz at the man before quite literally kicking him right into the ground, knocking him out into unconsciousness. And after that, he would pretty much put that man on concrete as he would proceed to curb stomp him immediately, just... The man's teeth would go out flying. And this is when a ninja who was standing nearby would actually end up um, pretty much body flickering right towards Naruto. And Naruto would look up at the man and give him a death stare. As this is when the ninja would basically jump back holding a kunai in his hand. And Naruto would stand up as he would just see a demonic aura surrounding Naruto. This black and purple aura just all around him. And this is when Naruto would basically smile as he would give a lighthearted smile. And the man would slowly calm down. However, this is when Naruto would blitz the ninja snapping his neck in an instant. As the ninja would fall onto the ground and his life would flash before his eyes. Naruto would then leave leave the shop grabbing his jacket as he would go home and wash it off this is when naruto would pretty much put it down that nobody's going to be disrespecting him he doesn't care if he's some jinchuriki of the nine tails that's not going to be no excuse if anybody disrespects naruto they're all going to be getting the same treatment these hands are rated e for everybody that being said this is when naruto's name would finally start getting out there a little bit more and at this point, Naruto would finally ask Hiruzen to live on his own, to which he would appease these wishes, and he would end up telling Naruto that he's going to be living by himself in the same apartment which he is in canon. That being said, this is when Naruto would basically decide to train on his own for the next couple of years, as Naruto would say that the old man has pretty much taught him all he needs. For now, he'll probably just use some scrolls for some jutsus that he wants to learn along the way, but he doesn't really know if just kicking in, you know, taijutsu will really be enough, so he's going to learn a couple jutsus, not not only that, but Naruto is actually pretty interested in Kenjutsu, which is pretty much a uh swordsmanship in naruto that's pretty much what it is it's called kenjutsu that being said though yeah naruto's gonna end up basically taking up after swordsmanship and this would basically lead to a six year time skip meaning that naruto was going to be 14 and at this point the academy and all that stuff would have basically already ended however i'm not gonna just hit you guys with a giant time skip without giving you guys any information as to what happened or any or without having you guys miss any black air force activity that being said i need to cover the first day of the academy because the first day that's when everybody tried to test nar so that's where all the juicy stuff happens all right so what happens on the first day well let me tell you so naruto was of course going to be getting his drip together as naruto would put on some black air forces with a weird symbol on him naruto would have ended up finding them on his mailbox one on his little porch one day when he just decided to wear them they were a perfect fit and so naruto did and for some reason they seemed as if they gave him power and naruto wearing them would get an exponential boost of 10 times his normal strength so yeah black air forces i'm definitely taking that into account <laughs> all right all right i need to stop playing no but seriously yeah so naruto would basically end up going into well the school when of course this is when he would end up seeing one person in the class in particular who would actually catch his attention the boy would be named sasuke uchiha and i'm guessing many of you guys already know why Naruto takes interest in Sasuke because of the fact that Sasuke just has this potential around him. He has this aura. And not to say that he's going to be sort of like the Kraken of uh, the Kraken from uh, Tokyo Revengers. But he's kind of going to be like Naruto's best friend in this, uh, in this version of events. Kind of, but not kind of at the same time. I don't really know how to explain it. But yeah, they're, they're going to be a little tight together with each other in terms of friendship. And yeah, they're definitely going to have a couple of moments where, you know, they, they're chilling. So, this is how everything is basically going to start. That being said, this is when Naruto would walk into the classroom as he would begin to walk over to Sasuke. However, as he approaches, he would notice a pink-haired and blonde-haired girl bickering over who's going to be sitting next to Sasuke. The pink-haired one would have this weird little bo uh, red bow around her head, her forehead, to cover up her hair. And the other one would be pretty, actually very pretty in Naruto's eyes. This is when Naruto would basically proceed to look at Sakura as he would, he would basically step over her and pretty much proceed to well essentially 
sit down right next to Sasuke, but I kind of feel like I didn't really explain what happened. To give you guys more of a real description on what really ended up happening was Naruto pretty much ends up seeing Sakura and Ino. He walks over to them and when he sees that they're not going to be stepping out of the way, Naruto instead of just doing something rude, which is what he normally would do, but seeing as they're girls, he kind of let it slide. So he would jump over Sakura and Ino and land right on the chair. He would sit next to Sasuke and look over to him as he would say, what's your name? Sasuke would turn over to Naruto and be like, my name is Sasuke Uchiha. However, before he even got to finish that sentence, Sakura would be like, what are you doing in my seat? Don't you know that I was going to sit there? As Ino would say, no, I was. And they would both pretty much begin to bicker over who was going to sit next to Sasuke. This is when Naruto would say, why don't you get lost, huh? As Sakura, after hearing that, would say, how dare you? And she would pretty much go to punch Naruto. Na Ugh, sorry about that. I, I don't know what that was, but... Yeah, she would pretty much go to punch Naruto. However, right as she does, Naruto would look her right at her eyes as he would tank the punch, literally not moving. And everybody in the class would go silent as Naruto would chuckle and say, <laughs> My little brother Kanahamaru punches harder than you. As Sakura would say, What did you just say? And she would reel her arm back again and she would say, I wasn't even trying. And she would try to punch again. However, this is when Naruto would pretty much stick out one finger as he would catch the punch. And this is when Naruto would grab her by the wrist as Naruto would begin to squeeze and smile at her. And Ino would say, what are you doing? Let her go. Sakura would scream and this is when Naruto would say, shut up. As he would punch her right on her elbow as he would pretty much break it, causing it to go inwards. So you know how our elbows normally can't really go all the way around? He would quite literally cause it to go 360 like the entire elbow completely snapped broken that thing is not going to be fixed in like one day i'll tell you that much and naruto would then proceed to basically push her away as iruka would actually end up walking into the classroom saying who are you as he would basically say like how dare you do that to one of the students step outside right now and naruto would go outside with iruka and not really say anything he would kind of just stay quiet as iruka bickers and naruto would enter the classroom once more as ino was in his seat naruto would look right at ino and she would say yep got the message she would grab her things and she would move immediately sitting right next to sakura who or kind of next to sakura if she was there because sakura is at the infirmary right now and she would basically just sit down as of course naruto would begin to talk to sasuke a little bit more and well this is when everybody would kind of realize that naruto is not meant to be played with that being said they would end up taking their exams they would end up running around doing a couple of ninja questions and they would end up having their spars however instead of naruto versus sasuke being the first battle that ever happens it's instead going to be kiba versus naruto and kiba is of course going to be talking all the shit in the world and if you guys are wondering why i don't say the actual word it's because i just don't want to get the yellow check on my video that being said he'd be talking mad stuff to naruto telling him that he's gonna beat him and all this stuff and as soon as the match starts naruto would use the iconic mikey kick to snatch him by the neck and kick him slamming him right into the concrete as he would be taking out immediately kiba would be rushed to the infirmary as well and this one naruto would turn to the classroom which was all hope that Kiba was going to be able to live up to all the stuff he was saying, but just like many of you guys were probably expecting, he wasn't. That being said, this one after this, everybody else would go, and Naruto would end up running up on Iruka after class, as he would say, So, quite some speech he gave to me over there when nobody was there to watch. As Iruka would say, Yeah, no, Naruto, but you can't be doing that to your classmates. I understand she was being rude, but you cannot do that. Naruto would then basically just be like, Oh, yeah. Yeah, true, you're right. As he would basically give Iruka a stare of death. And he would pretty much project his bloodlust onto Iruka. As he would say, if you ever talk to me in the way that you did outside, I will kill you. As Iruka would get shivers down his spine. And Naruto would then walk out of the classroom with a smile on his face. He would say, alright, well, have a good day. This is when Naruto would basically end up running the academy for the following years that Naruto was going to be in it. After that, everybody would stay in line. And on the occasion, a, a couple of, you know, nobodies would try to step up to Naruto. But 
he kind of babies them because of the fact that they're so incredibly weak compared to him. After the six years, Naruto started carrying a sword around because Naruto at this point is now pretty good at, at swordsmanship. He's actually amazing at it. And Naruto's only going to be getting better and better as time goes on. That being said, the ice cream truck is coming back. So I'm gonna, gonna, gonna end up pausing the video for a little bit because that noise is just annoying to me. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna be annoying to you guys. Give me a second. All right, so it semi went away. I'm, I'm not really sure if you guys will be able to hear hear it from the distance, but yeah, getting right back into the story, they're basically going to be on their final day of the academy, seeing as they're all going to be 14 now. And I'm pretty sure that in the original they're all 12 or 13, but in this version, I'm kind of just gonna uh, upscale their ages a little bit. That means that the little uh, Uchiha massacre stuff still gonna be happening at the same time, and Sasuke is actually gonna end up getting way stronger because of the fact that he trains alongside Naruto. Not exactly going to be as strong as Naruto though because Naruto just has black air force energy he has the actual black air forces and he trained under Hiruzen the literal Kokage and what some people call the god of shinobi so yeah Sasuke definitely going to be a lot weaker than Naruto however one thing that does benefit Sasuke is that he's going to basically end up having a little bit more of a edge on his normal counterpart and he's also going to be able to know how to use kenjutsu way earlier on and in case you forgot what that means it basically just means swordsman he can basically use swords katana and all that stuff yeah that's pretty much what sasuke ends up learning because naruto ends up teaching him a couple of things that being said yeah everybody pretty much kind of gets told to do their final exam where all of them would pretty much end up doing it everybody passes and of course mizuki's still going to be trying to trick somebody but naruto kind of just body slams the kid and mizuki as well returning the scroll back to the village and the very next day they all go into class when they're all assigned their little teams. Of course, just like many of you guys expect, Kakashi, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura are all going to be on the same team. Now, Sakura would try to say something because she's terrified of Naruto, but she loves Sasuke. So it's kind of a win-lose situation where she's either going to take the good with the bad or not going to take any good at all. So Sakura decides she's just going to let it happen. And this is when everybody would kind of just end up just kind of agreeing with well they're kind of going to be stuck with each other so they might as well get to know each other and to the point where they're all waiting that entire hour for kakashi to arrive now naruto is not impatient and naruto does not tolerate being late at all so when kakashi walks in there's not going to be some little praying no chalk on the top of the door that's not happening no instead the second that kakashi walks in through the door Naruto quite literally blitzes Kakashi as he throws a mean kick right at the side of Kakashi's head, which Kakashi narrowly is able to dodge. As at this point, Naruto basically kicks the door, which would basically destroy like half of the wall and concrete that was on it. As Naruto would then step back and he would then rush at Kakashi with intent to murder him. Kakashi would then jump back and take out a kunai as he would be like, dude, what are you doing? He would begin to block the attacks from Naruto as Naruto would say, you think you're going to be this late and it's just going to slide? I'll kill you for that. Naruto would rush Kakashi as he and Kakashi would get into a bout, a bout, which Sasuke watches. And during this time, Sasuke's like, you know what? I'm kind of bored. I might as well. As Sasuke would quite literally jump in as he would rush at Kakashi and take out his sword. He would throw it at Naruto as Naruto would grab it and throw it right at Kakashi. Kakashi would use a substitution jutsu as he would be right behind Sasuke trying to use the headhunter's jutsu to drag him into the ground however sasuke would jump into the air and say fire stop fireball jutsu as he would shoot a giant fireball straight at the ground which sakura ends up running away to the corner of the classroom and naruto would basically end up jumping onto the walls he would stand there and this is when naruto would pretty much proceed to look at kakashi as he would say you want to be late well i'll show you what it's like to be late with me he would blitz at kakashi as kakashi would literally end up having to pull up his headband as a purple and black aura would start emanating off of naruto and naruto would deliver a thunderous kick at kakashi which he actually blocks but it ends up pretty much fracturing his arm and kakashi actually gets kicked out of the building in and of itself naruto would start slowly walking out of there so he would grab the sword and pretty much end up walking over to kakashi as he would say you're late again and you're not gonna have a head on your shoulders and this is when kakashi would kind of widen his eyes and be like who what like like he was just lost for words 
Naruto and Sasuke would basically end up walking away as Sasuke ended up inheriting just a little, you know, just a little bit of Black Air Force energy, you know what I mean? When you hang around Naruto every day, you kind of end up getting a little bit of that rubbed off on yourself. That being said, this is when Naruto would basically end up just saying, alright, so you think we should go back now? As Sasuke would say, I think you proved your point. Naruto would chuckle as he would basically turn back to Kakashi and say, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Look, don't be late again. Kakashi would be getting himself up as he pretty much dusting himself off and say, how is this kid so strong? And Naruto would basically look at Kakashi as he would say, oh, and if you're wondering how I'm so strong, I'm the son of the fourth Hokage. Kakashi would widen his eyes as he would say, what? As he would look at his eyes and say, oh, yeah, I can kind of see the resemblance. He has Kushina's eyes. And this is when, you know, he would basically proceed to just kind of be like, all right, well, just, I guess, uh, tomorrow, meet me at the forest. I won't be late this time. Kagashi would end up pretty much limping away from there as Naruto would end up saying, I know you're not going to be late tomorrow because if you are, I'll kill you. And Kakashi would pretty much end up having to go to some recovery ninjas as the very next day, they all end up meeting at a little bit of a forest. Now, of course, they're all going to be meeting, and this is when everybody would have their introductions. I'm not going to cover that. Naruto basically says that he wants to become the strongest ninja in existence, and Sasuke basically says that he wants to defeat a certain somebody, as well as always be alongside his his uh you know his friend Naruto. Kakashi would think that you know they have a pretty good friendship for you know what they did out there, because to think that Naruto and this kid would have this sort of friendship probably wouldn't be the first thing that he thinks of that being said kakashi would just be like all right and he would basically have a cast on as he's like all right so what what's what's your deal soccer would say uh uh as she twiddles her fingers and all that stuff and kakashi would kind of get the gist of what the team is going to be like he would realize sasuke and naruto op sakura literal trash bag this is when kakashi would end up just being like well at least I got two good people. This one, he would basically tell them all that they're going to be having a little bit of a test. As Naruto would say, yeah, that's fine, but you sure you can do it right now? I mean, look at your arm. Kagashi would say, oh, yeah, it's not for you guys. You guys work well together, but I just want to see about Sakura. You guys are going to be acting in supporting roles and helping her try to gain these bells. You guys won't be able to do this, 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 and that. And Kakashi would explain a couple of handicaps for them for them not to be able to help Sakura out that much. They're basically only going to be able to give her pointers. And Sakura has about one hour to steal the bell from Kakashi. Now, after that entire hour, Sakura was of course not able to steal the, the bell from Kakashi. In fact, she actually ended up passing out of literal exhaustion. And Naruto and Sasuke kind of just ended up sighing, being like, well, looks like we're going back to the academy. Naruto would get a very angry expression on his face as he would say, well... Uh, she did her best, I guess, as he would basically proceed to grab Sakura and throw her over her shoulder and say, alright, let's go drop her off home. This is when Kakashi would be like, wait, you guys all pass. As he would end up explaining to all of them that this was pretty much all just to, well, kind of see what their teamwork is like. And he would say that, yeah, they pass. You know, they're strong enough and Sakura needs to be incorporated into the missions a little bit more. But other than that, they'll definitely be making an exceptional team when they end up going on missions. Naruto would smile and everybody would kind of just be in good terms this is when everybody would go and kakashi would stop naruto as he would ask him how does he know that he's the fourth son naruto would pretty much just say oh yeah uh Hiruzen told me he also told me a little bit about you told me that you know you used to be on my dad's team it's kakashi would just be like uh yeah i did as naruto would say cool cool well keep all those little stories to yourself i couldn't care less about that old man as her kakashi would just be like what and naruto would just say yeah i mean the man died on me if he was the fourth okage he should have survived that attack as kakashi would kind of just be like shocked like shocked for words lost for words completely Naruto would put his hands in his pockets as he would say, Hey Sasuke, wanna go grab some ramen? As Sasuke would say, Oh yeah, totally. And they would both end up walking away laughing. They're both just having a great old time. Alright, so we pick up the story right after Sasuke and Naruto ended up basically going to the ramen shop. They'd pretty much arrive, Naruto would pay for the ramen, and of course, this is when they would end up basically going their second ways. However, not before Naruto would tell Sasuke to get ready for these boring missions, as Sasuke would say, what are you talking about? And Naruto would basically look at him as he would say, we're gonna be chasing dogs, like cats, dude. Like, it, it, it's 100% certain. It doesn't matter how strong we are. At least for two weeks, we're going to be chasing around dogs. This is when Sasuke would get kind of aggravated after hearing that. I'd be like, oh, great. As he'd pretty much end up walking home, Naruto would as well. And he would end up training as soon as he gets home. This is when Naruto would basically end up 
kind of just uh skipping over to the very next day as naruto would train for about two to three hours but afterwards would kind of just pass out and the very next day as he expected they started chasing around cats now we're gonna have a little bit of a two-week time skip because that's precisely how long they're gonna keep going until sasuke finally gets enough of chasing cats around and he finally tells the hokage that he wants a better mission and that if he doesn't get one he's gonna act out as this one naruto would basically just smirk as kakashi's just sitting there like oh, these kids and uh one thing that i have to say before i continue the story guys i'm so sorry that on the last part i said kraken like bro come on now i i was i was on something that day or something like that but like bro come on now no way i got that wrong i wasn't actually you know doing nothing but still though i got that wrong and i 1000 percent shouldn't have that being said yeah draken i know i know people told me in the comment section and i felt so dumb afterwards but yeah that being said it this is when hiruzen would basically look at sasuke and he would pretty much proceed to be like all right then you want a harder mission all right you can have the C rank one. Sasuke would smile as it's at this point that a drunken man would walk inside. Now he would see Naruto and Sasuke and be and have like a little bit of a smirk on his face. But this one he would turn towards Sakura's direction as he would see the pink hair and the outfit that she was wearing. As she would basically, as he, not she, but he would basically proceed to walk over to her as he would say, so this little puny thing is going to be taking care of me. This one he would say, huh, I might as well get my refund because I'm dying on, on the way there. As this one, Haruzen would basically kind of just, you know, uh, what's it called? Um, kind of like give himself like a slap in the face. No, 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 no. He would, he would headbutt him. No, what's the word that I'm looking for? He would pretty much just, you, you know, when you grab your head and you kind of like you're just irritated by things and you just like you hit your head or something like that. He face palm. Yes, he would face palm and just be like, uh, as it's at this point that Naruto would crack a smile and so Sasuke would basically just kind of just sit there, not really saying a thing, just kind of being excited for the fact that they're going to get the mission. Now, Sakura, she would look at him and she would be like, why you? As in her head, she'd be thinking, cha, you know, that weird stuff, that inner monologue that she used to have. And Naruto would give her a stare of, if you do anything, I'll kill you. As Sakura, after seeing that, would immediately just be like, I, uh, yeah, bro, you, you can get away with anything you want. Trust me, that meant nothing to me. No harm done. And Naruto would basically just nod his head as he's like, yeah that's right you better be an obedient little dog as sakura would just kind of be a little scared and it's at this point that everybody would kind of just be dismissed now afterwards this is when naruto and sasuke would end up going over to sasuke's place to train and they would train for the following next 10 hours meaning that they wouldn't even get any sleep honestly they the sleep levels that they end up getting is not the greatest they get about like six hours of sleep because let's say that by the time that they went to ask for the mission it was around like noonish or something like that i don't know just just something that pretty much equates to 10 hours and then like six hours of sleep right that being said Said, though this is when they would pretty much end up meeting tazuna the bridge builder by the gate of the village and they would all pretty much end up going outside this is when everybody would finally start the journey as about 30 minutes later this is when naruto would notice a puddle now naruto's not dumb he could clearly tell that it was genjutsu and as soon as he does naruto would quite literally take out his blade as he would slash in the air and this is when the genjutsu would pretty much be broken as naruto would throw the katana up into the air and say sasuke as he would pretty much hold his hands out sasuke would jump off of naruto's hands as he would jump up into the air and kick the blade straight into one of the demon brother's skulls causing that demon brother to fall onto the ground with the other one immediately getting scared of these genin as he would pretty much stop in place and just look around he's looking for a method of escaping but this is when naruto would blitz behind him and smirk as he would kick the back of his head literally crushing the man's skull as they would have been taken out in less than five seconds and this is when naruto would pretty much go up to the man who has his sword in his head as he would say give me that don't be taking things he'd say swipe or no swiping as it's at this point that the man would just fall onto his knees and quite literally just be on the ground as naruto just you know wipes off the blood off of his sword and continues the walking this one tazuna would just be thinking yep that kid is scary as they would continue the journey and kakashi would just be sitting there like whoa like this kid is insane there's like a darkness to him he did that without a second thought 
As they would continue the journey, and Kakashi would just kind of be pondering this, thinking what would Minato think about his son. He would say that, well, yeah, he is powerful. He kind of sacrifices in the aspect of his humanity. As he would proceed to continue, and Kakashi would just be thinking that he's no better himself. When he was around Naruto's age, he was basically doing the same thing for a living. I mean, the man was in the Ambu. That being said, this is when all of them would pretty much proceed to go into the go into more of the walking and stuff like that. When they would finally walk for about another two hours. This is when a heavy mist would finally start to surround them. As they would all pretty much end up realizing that, yeah, this is probably a jutsu. Because there's no way that there's mist this strong, no matter where they go. This is when Kakashi would say, everybody duck! As Naruto would quite literally stand there. And when the blade comes spinning right at them... Naruto would quite literally just chuckle as he looks down at the ground and then pretty much proceeds to jump up into the air as the blade like is coming right under him and Naruto would kick the blade straight onto the ground so just imagine like Naruto jumps over the the little blade the the uh, sword and stuff like that right Naruto jumps over it and when the blade is right under him Naruto just stomps at it as it would literally fall onto the ground and break this is when Zabuza would kind of just, um, you know, body flicker in front of all of them as he would say, How dare you disrespect my sword? As he would pretty much say, I'll have your head for that. Zabuza would then proceed to basically rush at Naruto, and in an instant, Kakashi would blitz at Zabuza before he even gets a chance to do a thing to Naruto, and he would kick him away as Zabuza gets hurt pretty badly because Sasuke already has a Sharingan activated because he's not about to let his friend get hurt, you know what I mean? They're practically brothers from how close they are. That being said, seeing this, Haku would immediately realize that this guy might be in trouble if those are the Genin. As it's at this point that Kakashi would pretty much just lay back and just be thinking, yeah, I just need to get my guard up. He would look at Sakura as he would say, Sakura! Guard the guard, guard the bridge, bridge builder. As Sakura would do so, she would go over there with her kunai looking useless as ever. And Kakashi would kind of just stand there as he's just getting ready to, you know, if anything. This is when Kakashi would just look towards Sasuke and Naruto as he would say, Guys, step back. I'll handle this. And this is when Kakashi would pretty much go into the battle as he would pretty much have to fight with Zabuza. However, the fight would pretty much go the same as it does in canon. And Naruto let it happen because Kakashi needed to humble himself. And that's exactly what Naruto let happen. He pretty much saw the way that Kakashi was and how he was thinking he was about to show off. But no, the man got trapped and he ended up getting, do he ended up getting you know, basically dying if it wasn't for the fact that those two were there as it's at this point that naruto would crack his neck and just say oh, kakashi i can't believe you got trapped by a simple water prison jutsu he would quite literally blitz at zabuza so fast with zabuza's own sword and like mind you and he would be holding that with one hand the man naruto is broken when it comes to his strength naruto would then quite literally slash at zabuza zabuza would have to jump back and you know Sasuke would end up have, handling a bunch of the shadow clones because, you know, he wasn't about to let no shadow clones stop Naruto from doing what he wanted. So yeah, Naruto would go over there and Zabuza would have to jump back as it would quite literally become a 3v1 with overpowered ninjas. Sasuke, not that much, but Naruto, definitely a whole lot of brokenness there. That being said, this one Haku would throw a bunch of Senbons at Kakashi as Kakashi was thrown off guard. The man literally, like, was not breathing for a long time and then out of nowhere he finally regained himself and Haku came in so fast throwing Senbon right at Kakashi's vital points causing Kakashi to get knocked out instantly this is when Naruto would quite literally just chuckle and be like oh my god this leader is so weak as it's at this point that he would say you're weak sauce Kakashi and Kakashi would pretty much just be passing out into unconsciousness just thinking uh as he just passes out and it's at this point that sasuke would see that haku was trying to go hit naruto now after seeing this sasuke would quite literally take out his blade as he would blitz at haku and they would get into a battle of speed sasuke and haku would both just be blitzing at each other trying to slash each other's head off whoever did it first was gonna basically be the winner when it came to this little challenge and yeah that's pretty much what they end up doing for this time that being said though guys this is when they would pretty much all just get into like one-on-one -on -one fights where it would be Naruto versus Zabuza and Haku versus Sasuke. Now, I'm pretty sure many of you guys can imagine how it goes, except this is a what if, so I'm going to have to explain it to you guys. All right, so which one should I start with first? Sasuke and Haku. Now, I'm going to start off with Naruto. 
Actually, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna start off with Naruto. And I'm gonna stop at like the midway point. And then I'm gonna cover Sasuke's and stop at the midway point as well. Yeah, 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 that sounds like a pretty good system. All right, so as for the Naruto versus Zabuza fight, the way that it goes down is that Naruto would quite literally throw his sword right at Zabuza. As his sword, I basically mean Zabuza's. But, you know, Zabuza would catch it and say, what are you getting at, boy? As Naruto would quite literally just say that he doesn't need it. As it's at this point that Zabuza would say, well, how dare you? As he would have rushed at Naruto. And now Naruto would take out his blade as well. And he would start getting into a, a, a Kenjutsu fight with Zabuza. Anytime that Zabuza would pretty much try to parry, Naruto would quite literally nick him every single time. Which would, after 100 nicks of just getting cut slowly over time, Zabuza would begin to get worn down as Naruto is pretty much been vibing this entire time. Naruto has not had to try a single bit. Like, the man Naruto has not been having to put in any effort. The man's basically been dancing around all of Zabuza's attacks. And he's basically just kind of bullying the man because it's like, come on now, bro. You're not about to do that to the, uh, the demon of the Mist Village. Like, it's not normal. But, yeah. Naruto, in a nutshell, ends up getting into a sword fight. They would clash back and forth, as they would they would actually be having a pretty good battle. It's not like it's completely one-sided, because Zabuza is basically blocking a couple of Naruto's attacks, but in the end, Naruto ends up winning by shooting a wind a wind bullet jutsu right into Zabuza when he was off his off his balance by basically shooting uh what's what's his name Zabuza into the air. And right as this happens, Naruto was about to land the finishing blow, but as for Sasuke and Haku, she would have ended up trapping Sasuke in the ice crystal mirrors, but Sasuke would use his katana to deflect all the Sen Bonds, using his Tutomoe Sharingan to keep up with him, and they would just be having a pretty dope battle overall. This is when Haku would notice that Zabuza was about to get killed, and he would shoot out of the ice crystal mirror, as this would leave Sasuke the perfect opportunity to get out of there. He would blitz towards Haku, but he wouldn't exactly be fast enough, and this is when Naruto would pretty much end up getting impaled right through like the chest, like literally right through the chest. Haku would come in and catch Naruto off guard, as he would impale him right through the chest with a Senbon needle. Now, this one Naruto would turn towards Haku, and blood would begin to f spill out of Naruto's mouth as he would say, <coughs> and this is when Haku would simply smile, say, I'll always be by your side, Zabuza. Now, this is when after seeing that, Sasuke would lose himself to a rage, and would blitz at Haku as he would slice his head off immediately, and Naruto's eyes would just kind of go black pitch black this is when a black and purple ominous aura would begin to surround naruto as it's at this point that naruto would grab the senbon ripping it out of his chest because it narrowly missed his heart and naruto would start getting these demonic eyes as i bet you guys are wondering black and purple energy that's not the nine tails well no it's not the nine tails not only is it black purple but it's red as well because the nine tails is influencing naruto healing him up slowly and naruto would look at zabuza as zabuza would quite literally quake in fear he would be in the presence of a real demon see if zabuza thought he was the real deal then uh, he's about to get a rude awakening because when it comes to naruto and zabuza they are two they're in two way different leagues Zabuza is in a whole different world. He's basically in uh, 500 BC, and Naruto is basically over here using nukes and tanks and all that stuff. So, yeah, when I say Zabuza is terrified, he is terrified. This one, Zabuza would basically just look. At, would basically look at Naruto as he would close his eyes, pretty much just accepting defeat, not being able to move. Zabuza just drops his sword and pretty much lets the blade cut straight into Zabuza's heart. As Zabuza would fall into the ground, Naruto. Naruto would quite literally just start stomping Zabuza's head in as he just caves it in as much as he literally can and by the end of it Zabuza's head would quite literally look like Flat Stanley like that's how bad it was. Naruto at this point would then look at Sasuke as Sasuke would put his hand over Naruto's shoulder and say calm down Naruto. This one Naruto would look at Sasuke and Sasuke would be giving him a stare of you better calm down or else I'll make you calm down and Naruto at this point would slowly start calming down saying you're right. As he would breathe and he would then grab Kakashi's, he would throw him over his shoulders and look at Tazuna as he would say, let's go to your house, old man. Tazuna would begin to lead them there as they would arrive to the village and it's at this point that they would see the poverty and the state of the village. Now, Naruto, after seeing this, would get extremely angry. 
he would get like triggered to a whole different level because while naruto is like does have black air force energy it's not like he doesn't have a heart you know naruto does feel for these people and seeing people in this state just made him feel anger a bunch of overwhelming anger that said naruto would ask who did this as tazuna would say oh it was gato gato and his men they've been ruining this village for years this is the reason why we need to build a bridge. It's going to be revolutionary for us. It'll help us go back into trading and get out of Gato's little business. He's been br bringing us to ruins throughout the years. As he would basically have a teardrop go down his face. Naruto, after hearing this, would say, oh, okay, interesting. As he would quite literally grab his sword and tell Sasuke to come along with him. After they put Kakashi into the bed and pretty much end up just kind of leaving before dinner even starts. Naruto would pretty much just ended up grabbing like a little bit of a bowl. And that had like some rice and chicken in it. And he would basically pass one to Sasuke. As Naruto would basically tell them all that he's going to be back with Gato's head. As Tazuna would just... Just kind of be like believing him like he has no doubt because he just saw what naruto just did out there so to doubt naruto is like to doubt that black is you know a dark color you know like it is you know what i mean it's like it's like doubting that let's see let's see let's see let's see that if you throw an apple into the air it, it won't fall you know like you can't doubt that man you know what i mean that being said though yeah naruto pretty much ends up fighting gato's base and uh when I say he makes him pay for it, he literally does. If you guys have seen Tokyo Ghoul, he pretty much puts uh, Gato under that same horrendous torture that Kaneki was put through. And afterwards, he pretty much ends up grabbing Gato's head by his hair and just having Sasuke slice the head clean off. Afterwards, Naruto would see all the gold and all the money and everything that Gato has, and he would pretty much end up taking some for himself, as Naruto would actually get pretty rich off of that. But afterwards, he would end up basically just leaving that base there seeing as naruto wants to use it later on that being said though guys this is when naruto would return back to the team letting them know that yeah gato's taken care of and quite literally showing them gato's head as all of them would be shocked tazuna would be as well as inari would come downstairs seeing the head would literally throw up and say you 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 killed him as he would pretty much end up crying and running away as his mom would have to help him and naruto would just be thinking what a sissy it's at this point that he would sit down and finally get to enjoy uh what's her name tsunami no no, no. Yeah, yeah tsunami he would finally get to enjoy tsunami's home cooked meal as it's at this point that he would pretty much just end up finally getting some rest really not doing anything up to, up until uh kakashi wakes up actually no yeah he's gonna be doing something during that time that kakashi was passed out naruto decided that he's not gonna have a weak teammate on his squad so he pretty much ends up taking this time to train sakura now sakura is pretty afraid of naruto but seeing as naruto has sasuke with him to try to help out with getting sakura to do what she needs to do sakura actually ended up learning a little faster than what she did with kakashi she ended up learning tree walking water walking all that stuff and she ends up finding out her elemental jutsu which i'm going to be saying is water because why not that being said though guys this one they would finish building the bridge and kakashi would of course wake up the bridge would have been built way long ago however uh you know they were just waiting for kakashi to heal up this is when they would all basically finally be done with everything and kakashi would ask what happened naruto would tell him the truth and kakashi would say oh i looked pretty lame back there didn't i naruto would just say he did he did as he would pretty much just smile and this one kakashi would just face palm as it's at this point that all of them would end up walking back to the village and when they arrive this is when naruto would basically just be walking in as his little brother kanahamaru one of the only people who naruto is actually kind to would run up to naruto throwing a kunai straight at the man's neck mind you naruto would catch it mid-air and say kanahamaru as kanahamaru would run away just laughing thinking that that naruto's chasing him and naruto would just give him a little one minute head start this one konohamaru would turn the corner and bump into konkuro as konkuro would grab konohamaru by the throat and pick him up saying you got a death wish kid how about you watch where you're going next time as he would say you know what 
there won't be a next time as he would basically start getting his hand and preparing to quite literally slaughter Konohamaru. However, this is when Naruto would blitz behind Konkuro as Naruto would basically proceed to rush at Kon Konkuro. This is when Naruto would take out Akuna and quite literally slit Konkuro's throat. Not, not, not on some jokes. Naruto would quite literally end Konkuro in an instant. After this, Tamari would take out her fan as she would slash at the air, causing Naruto to get 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 blown back just a tiny bit. And Naruto at this point would then kind of just scoff as he would tell Konohamaru to run out of here. This is when Sasuke would basically kind of body flicker behind Tamari and say, How dare you lay a hand on my brother? As basically, he would pretty much proceed to lift up his hand as he would proceed to pretty much just say, Water, uh, no, uh, air, gale, air palm fist or something like that. Air, gale, gale palm, gale palm, gale palm or something. Like, I don't know. He would do something that would pretty much cause Tamari to get a giant burst of wind and chakra blown straight into her chest. That would pretty much cause Tamari to drop down to her knees and fall out due to unconsciousness. After seeing this, Gara would get enraged saying, how dare you harm my siblings? As just kidding, he would not do that, but he would kind of just get angry at the fact that, you know, he hurt those people because he knows them. Not because he cares about them, but because he knows them. After that, Gara would quite literally, like, his eyes would widen as he would shoot sand at Naruto. And this is when Naruto would stand still. As he would pretty much do what Guy did when Gara shot the sand at Rock Lee, he pretty much disperses it and then looks at Gara with a death stare. Gara would immediately say, Those eyes. I've seen those eyes before. As he would be, you know, talking gibberish. And Naruto would look at Gara as he would say, you're projecting a whole lot of bloodlust. I'm going to need you to take it down a few notches. As he would quite literally blitz behind Gara and kick him right on the back of the head. And Gara realizing this would have a uh, sand b uh, barrier com come up. But Naruto would quite literally kick straight through the sand, destroying it and grabbing onto Gara's head. However, the second that Naruto took to kick through the... the um, the sand gara would have literally just um body no 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 not body flickered but he would have substituted out of there and this caused naruto to pretty much destroy the sand clone which was left behind after this gara would have a lot of sand go up to naruto and right before he was about to crush it sasuke would rush in right right into Gara, as he would say, Chidori! And I'm guessing a lot of you guys are probably wondering how Sasuke ended up learning the Chidori. Well, Naruto ended up actually asking Kakashi about that, like basically once kakashi was able to open his eyes because once he was able to do that he couldn't walk for the next couple of days but he just asked what that was after that naruto basically ended up doing a little bit of learning and sasuke actually ended up learning the chidori naruto ended up learning a different variation of it one that instead of being like the chidori which gives you tunnel vision is pretty much the perfected version of the chidori now sasuke hasn't quite been able to master that one but yeah that's pretty much the reason why sasuke has it also that being said he has about two bursts of the chidori before before it finally runs out and after that sasuke would quite literally stab the chidori right into gara's heart as gara's heart would stop and he would fall down onto the ground sasuke would then take out his hand as naruto would quite literally go over to gara as he pretty much starts stomping gara's head and literally causing it to cave in on itself as naruto would say don't you ever hurt my brother again as he would then literally walk over to Kanahamaru with a smile and blood all over himself. As he would say, let's go home, Kanahamaru. Now, this is when Kanahamaru, after seeing this, get pretty scared. And he would quite literally just be like, uh... uh okay Nar naruto as naruto would basically just say all right go to go to lord third just tell him about this and Konkuro and tamari and gara would have pretty much all died actually tamari didn't actually end up dying did she i knocked her out all right tamari would pretty much be let be able to return to the village because all she did was fight back she didn't exactly hurt naruto or make him angry but gara the only reason that he got the fate that he got was because he projected bloodlust onto Naruto. And that is a big, big no-no. You do not do that to our boy Naruto. Absolutely not. After that, though, Naruto would basically go to the ramen shop with Sasuke as he and him would act as if nothing just happened. And they would pretty much proceed to just have a blast at the ramen shop. You know, they would be taking out two of the seats. And this is when a couple of Chunin would come in as they would look at Naruto and one of them would give Naruto an angry look. This is when Naruto would continue eating and notice it. And as Naruto does, he pretty much looks at him and says, you got a problem with me? 
This is when the man would say, no, not at all. As Naruto would say, well, it looks like you have a staring problem. As the guy would pretty much just say, and what if I do? As Naruto would pretty much just grab it, look look over to the man, look over at his little uh, ninja pouch where he has his kunais and stuff like that, and then think, you know what? This guy's going to get a fate worse than that. As he would pretty much, as soon as Ichiraku would pretty much bring out his ramen, this one Naruto would grab his bowl as he would quite literally throw the ramen into the guy's face, causing it to burn him. As Naruto would then pretty much just proceed to laugh, and at that point he would pretty much just uh, eat the rest of the ramen in the guy's bowl. As he would grab it and his own and pretty much just walk off as if he literally just did nothing. Not only that, but he would then look towards the guy as the, the ninja... As he would pretty much turn towards him and say, oh, and also you're paying for my meal because if you don't, as the ninja would have basically gone into a fighting stance, but Naruto projected his bloodlust onto him. And after that, the ninja kind of just backed out saying, absolutely not, not having it. I do not feel like dying. And Naruto and Sasuke pretty much ended up leaving after that. This is when all of them would pretty much be informed of the Chunin exams and Naruto would realize why those ninja were there. Naruto would then chuckle saying that if those were, that's all that they had, Naruto was going to become a Chunin easily. This is when he would look towards Sasuke's direction and say, Looks like I'm going to be the only one to become a Chunin this year. As Kakashi would say, what are you talking about? And Naruto would say, I mean, is, isn't only one person allowed to advance? As Kakashi would say, actually, no. More than one people have, have passed a Chunin exam at once, but most of the time it's usually one or none because sometimes not even a single ninja is ready to become a Chunin. That being said, this is when Naruto would realize what that meant, as he would pretty much just say, alright, makes sense, I mean, I guess, not everybody's cut out to, for this ninja life. As Naruto would put his hands in his pocket, and he would pretty much begin to walk off. This is when Naruto would do some training for the next couple of days, until the Chunin exams, with Sasuke, by the way, and Sasuke would continue trying to, uh, you know, increase the output of Chidori's. During that time, he also would have been doing a little bit of training with Kakashi, trying to master the Chidori a little bit more. Also, quick note, Sasuke was actually practicing it on the way back to the village as well so that's why he was able to get two bursts because before he could only get one that being said though kakashi and sasuke would be working on that and sasuke would get pretty strong he would be way stronger than the sasuke in the training exam so when it comes to the rock lee stuff like that yeah it's kind of going to be a little bit of a wash that being said this one i'm going to skip over to the well rock lee situation and in this version instead of having rock lee get completely dusted on because honestly that's just that's not fair bro come on now that's my boy rock lee i don't feel like doing him that dirty off rip you know what i mean so Instead of actually having him fight against Sasuke, he would actually turn his attentions towards Naruto. And Naruto would end up just telling him that he wants to save his energy for the Chunin exams. After this, this Rock Lee would just be like, come on, I am challenging you! As Naruto would basically just look at look at Go uh, Rock Lee, as he would pretty much just tell him, come on, we'll have our battle in the Chunin exams. And Rock Lee would just stand there as he would think about it and say, alright, but you better fight me in the Chunin exams, our battle will be legendary! As Naruto would look at him chuckle and then say sure it will be as he would walk off with sasuke and sakura this one sakura would say uh, uh naruto why didn't you fight that guy back there and naruto would say that it seems like he has a lot of potential but i want to find out when we can have their true battle as sakura would just be like uh, okay as basically after this they would all pretty much go inside and take the exam but nobody wants to hear about how naruto takes a written exam because nobody cares about that so i'm just gonna skip over that completely and this is when they have the final question which naruto still just doesn't say anything but just stays there saying that if he thinks that a simple little question is going to scare him off then he's dreaming as everybody else would end up staying not everybody but you know the people who stayed and this is when they would all go outside and they would meet anko where she would give them instructions on the forest of death naruto after hearing that you're allowed to pretty much put people on t-shirts and by that i mean k-i-l kill them i don't know why i said it so secretively but yeah when you're when you can kill them naruto would chuckle thinking that oh yeah it's gonna be a bloodbath and this is when naruto would notice a really creepy guy who's like licking his lips while he looks at sasuke naruto would notice this and not take it very lightly he would begin to get pretty angry and begin to walk over to the man as anko would throw a kunai right at naruto which naruto would catch in mid-air and then pretty much break it in half with one hand as he would use two fingers to just crack it it's at this point that anko would realize that yep that kid's gonna survive and after this everybody would kind of just be allowed to go in there however 
However, before I do continue on to the rest of the tuning exams, I do have to tell you guys about today's sponsor, Fandom. All right, so Fandom is an awesome enemy merch store, which you guys can basically go on and save 50% that's right, 50% on anime merch and apparel, including things like My Hero Academia, Naruto, Demon Slayer, One Piece. Pretty much all the big Shonen Jump animes that you guys can think of are the ones that they have on their stores and are available for you guys to purchase. Right now, they're having a sale on their store, and it's pretty good because their merch is already affordable. Plus, the fact that they're having the sale, which is most of the things are about 50% to 40% off. So, if I was you guys, I would act fast because I actually ended up copying myself a dress. Dragon Ball hoodie. Not sure if I'm going to put it up on screen, but I might. So if you want to see the one that I bought myself personally, you can look up on screen right now and there will be an image of the hoodie. It's a little Dragon Ball one with the symbol and Goku and the Nike sign on the back. It looks pretty dope. That being said though, yeah, that's pretty much what I ended up getting myself. And if you guys want to copy yourself any dope anime apparel, then definitely make sure to go on to fandom. You can even use code Zether at for 5% off at checkout and that'll pretty much cover your shipping fees because I mean 5% off of the order is pretty much the same price you're going to be paying for the shipping so yeah why not go on there and buy something from their awesome awesome website that being said let's get right back into the what if all right so hopping right back into the tuning exams we're pretty much going to pick off right where i left off so everybody pretty much ended up going into the forest and this is when naruto ended up not having to actually go take a leak like he does in canon in this version he ends up actually just doing it quite literally right when they get in there so as soon as they do naruto kind of just tells sasuke and sakura to turn the other way as he does his business in about 30 seconds and afterwards naruto would kind of just rush over to a river where he would wash his hands and afterwards they would all pretty much just start walking along as everybody just looks at naruto and sees just how calm he is and they'd be wondering why naruto doesn't have a care in the world naruto would say that why would he everything's gonna be so easy unless they run into that brown uh bushy hair eyebrowed guy as this one sakura would say huh that kid you saying he's strong naruto would say oh yeah definitely he has a lot of potential don't judge a book by its cover as sasuke would say well I'm, i'd be willing to fight him then as naruto would say nah i kind of want to save that cap for myself you're gonna be fighting me as sasuke would just smir smirk as he would say oh yeah and you think I'll lose this time again, don't you? As Naruto would say, I know you will. This is when Sasuke would give Naruto that look of just, just, um, just competition, that competition look, that grin, and they would both do so as they would both kind of just chuckle. And this when they would continue to walk. This is when a random ninja would come in and try to pretty much take the scroll as Naruto and Sasuke would pretty much just tell Sakura to handle this one. This one Sakura would say, uh, I can't do that. And this one they would say, if you don't do it, we will handle you ourselves. As Sakura would realize that, yeah, they're serious. So she would end up grabbing her kunai. And this is when she would pretty much use the transformation jutsu to essentially become bigger. As she would rush at the guy. And this is when the guy would realize that she grew as he would rush at her throwing a kick and sakura would basically reveal that i was just a clone and that she just did that for comedic effect as she would pretty much jump behind him with the substitution jutsu and knock him out by throwing a paper tag bomb he would throw the bomb at, at the ninja the bomb would explode catching the guy off guard and causing him to explode Luckily, the ninja would actually have the scroll on his back and Naruto would end up checking it to see that it's actually, it's a perfect match. This is when they would continue to go deeper and deeper into the forest as they would pretty much be walking there, having no care in the world. And Orochimaru would be waiting at their spot for about 30 minutes before they finally arrive. When they arrive though, they see this weird little snake person there as Naruto would just say, Ugh. You've been a real pain lately. If you don't leave, I'm going to have to eradicate you. As Orochimaru would pretty much lick his lips. And he'd be wearing the face mask and all that stuff. Covering his face and all that. You know you know what I mean. You guys all know what I mean, right? As basically Naruto realizing this would just be like... <sighs> he would sigh as he would then pretty much body flicker behind Orochimaru. As he would say, such speed. This one Naruto would use his blade to slice Orochimaru's head clean off. However, before he gets the chance, Orochimaru would regurgitate himself and Naruto would then kick Orochimaru as he would go into Sasuke's direction. Orochimaru doing this would try to go and bite Sasuke. However, Sasuke would use a couple hands as going 
as he would say, Chidori! He would rush at Orochimaru and pretty much impale him right on the side of the shoulder. As Orochimaru would let out a giant scream. And this is when Orochimaru would go in to bite Sasuke right on the neck. However, before he does that, Sakura would jump up into the air and throw a bunch of shuriken at Orochimaru. As Orochimaru would say, ah, he would just be thinking, damn it. As he would have to get away from Sasuke. And it's at this point that he would basically hold out a kunai as well saying well you guys all seem to be very skilled this is when naruto would look at orochimaru and say all right you can drop the act now as orochimaru would just basically look at naruto and he would say i know who you are the regurgitation the snake that you pulled out from your literal mouth you're orochimaru just take off the costume Orochimaru would smirk as he would say, huh, looks like you're a very clever one. As he would pretty much proceed to take off all the face paint and all that stuff. And Naruto would see a clear picture of what Orochimaru looks like. Naruto would then pretty much just start laughing, like incredibly laughing. He would start crackling up and his stomach would start hurting as he would fall onto his knees and say, you're the legendary Orochimaru, the one who made the village scared and started doing all that crazy stuff. He would start laughing in his face. He would walk over to him and put his hand literally on Orochimaru's head as he would say, I'm your daddy. This is when Orochimaru would get angry as he would pretty much go to try to slice Naruto. But Naruto would quite literally hold his forearm out as the blade would cut like not even an inch into Naruto's hand. Like not even like four centimeters into his arm as his bone would be getting reinforced with chakra and naruto would then push his arm away from orochimaru as he would say you know you did put a lot of fear into the village though and you gave haruzen a pretty hard time how about i give you a hard time as he would immediately drop the little act that he was having as naruto would let out all of his bloodlust everything naruto would let out all of his power the qb the black air force energy the purple and black aura would surround him with a little bit of red inside of it as naruto's eyes would turn into a crimson color and naruto would then basically give orochimaru a stare which orochimaru would only feel feel so much fear before in his life when he encountered itachi this is when naruto would quite literally blitz at orochimaru as he would pretty much slice his head off and sasuke would just be sitting back there with his hands in his pockets just thinking hurry up naruto as naruto at this point would have orochimaru's head and he would pretty much just throw it across the forest he would throw the head and it would actually end up landing in front of some random team as they would scream and go ah you know they would scream seeing a disem disembodied head right as it's at this point that everybody would end up leaving and if you guys are wondering if orochimaru actually got put on a t-shirt no he didn't orochimaru is a literal snake bro he's not gonna die it, it's not possible i believe he's one of the hardest anime characters to kill immortality Pfft. Orochimaru doesn't need that. He just needs a tiny little piece of himself to live. He's pretty much like Cell, but in Naruto. So, yeah. That being said, though, guys, this is when we are going to pretty much continue the what if. So, afterwards, this one, they would all pretty much make it to the little tower, and they would actually be the first ones to make it for that entire day. No other team would actually be able to make it to the tower before them, and they would actually end up breaking so many records, making it even sooner than Gara's team did, which means that Naruto ended up claiming the title for the fastest time ever recorded in all of Shinobi history. That being said, this is when all of them pretty much just ended up smirking, and for the following next couple of days, everybody would finally start showing up up as we would finally get everybody who you know was gonna show up at the tower of heaven or not the tower of heaven but like the little place that they were at i don't know where i got that name from tower of heaven let me think what anime is from no i think it's from uh tower of god no actually i don't know tower of heaven tower of heaven nope i don't know anyways that being said yeah all of them would arrive and they would have to have the little preliminary seeing as there is way too many people this is when all of the little matchups would pretty much begin to get announced as all of them would realize that they're all going to have to fight each other naruto would smile thinking that yeah this is about to be so much fun as sasuke would just kind of be thinking the same thing thinking that he can't wait to fight naruto and for the first battle i i can't believe i'm about to say this but yeah it's not exactly going to be kiba versus naruto nope it's gonna be naruto versus sakura and i'm guessing many of you guys are probably just gonna be sitting there like yo what and yeah 
it's Naruto versus Sakura. And I'm guessing many of you guys can probably expect how this battle goes. When it comes to this, Naruto would kind of just crack his neck as he would begin to jump up into the air, kind of just stretching in a Goku fashion. He would get into his fighting stance as he would say, alright Sakura, I'll try not to go too hard on you. And Sakura would actually be a little confident because she's sparred against Naruto a couple of times when he was putting in like 1% effort. So she would be thinking that, you know, maybe there's a chance. But this is when the match would start and Sakura would quite literally have Naruto blitz her as he would quite literally give her a little smack on the behind as Sakura would just be like huh as she would look behind her and Naruto would be in front of her this is when Sakura would quite literally blink once as her eyes are closed and the next time that she opens them is gonna be hours later because Naruto knocked her ass out after this Naruto would go back up to the stands and just smile at Sasuke as Sasuke is like dude I wish I could have had that battle. Naruto would just start dying, laughing his ass off as Sasuke would go in and have his battle. He would actually be the one who has to fight against Kiba. And when it comes to this fight, if Naruto was able to handle Kiba with nothing but a fart by shitting in his face, then I'm pretty sure that uh, Sasuke can definitely do a little something to Kiba. So when it comes to that match, nothing is really going to be happening because Sasuke kind of just bodies Kiba with the Taijutsu skills of Rock Lee. Or actually, no, he still hasn't acquired them, but his Taijutsu skills are pretty much on par with that. If not, his his skills are pretty much at the level of third gate Rock Lee with two sharing on. So pretty much fourth gate Lee. That being said though guys, this is when Sasuke would kind of just obliterate Kiba as the next couple of matches would happen. And Hinata would end up fighting against Neji, however Naruto was not going to sit there on some How dare you hurt Hinata! No, he doesn't do that or tell him that destiny doesn't mean anything because Naruto isn't close to Hinata. He does not care whatsoever about her health well-being. And Hinata doesn't even give Naruto the little get well ointment in this version because she doesn't view Naruto as somebody that she should give her love to because Naruto Naruto is kind of mean in her eyes. That being said, this is when they would all pretty much just have it announced that they're going to be going on that little one month training journey. As I'm kind of just going to have a time skip for the one month because I don't really feel like covering it. I mean, obviously Naruto is going to be training and meeting Jiraiya. However, when it comes to training with Jiraiya, the only real thing that he's going to be learning is how to use the Rasengan as well as using this summoning jutsu. Because Jiraiya doesn't really have too much to teach him. On the occasional sparring with Jiraiya, that's pretty much all that they're really going to be doing. When it comes to Sasuke, he would have actually ended up mimicking Rock Lee's Taijutsu skills, or at least the couple of moves that he saw that he thinks that he could put into his arsenal. Because they never ended up actually getting to see a full 4th gate Lee. He ended up having a fight against Choji, and all the rest of the other matches were kind of randomized. That being said, this is when all of them would kind of just get into their own little positions and get ready to get into their fights. As, you know, all of them had their fight, and you know, the one month is pretty much over. Jiraiya and Naruto's relationship in this version is kind of going to be like, it's pretty much going to be like uh, 10, 10 times more disrespectful Naruto at first, but after Naruto gets to know Jiraiya and actually sees him as a pretty cool guy, Naruto has so much respect for Jiraiya. Not only that, but when it comes to staring at girls, Naruto actually joined Jiraiya once and thought that it was actually pretty fun. So, he pretty much ended up doing a little bit of it with Jiraiya, doing a little bit of a research if you know what i'm putting down and after that point they all pretty much return for their little one month month battles and this is where naruto would pretty much just enter the arena now naruto's hair at this point would have grown out just a little bit longer and at this point naruto will basically be looking like a young version of mikey I never really ended up covering what Naruto would technically really be looking like at this point, but seeing as that now Naruto's around the age of like 13, now is when Naruto started looking like a little bit longer hair, you know, his hair started growing out a little bit, and not only that, but Naruto's starting to look a tad bit more like the Mikey in the picture every other day. After the time skip, where Naruto's going to be about 16 years old, he's definitely going to be looking like uh, the Mikey in the thumbnail, right? Um, in the thumbnail, yeah, yeah, the thumbnail. And so, yeah, that being said, Naruto basically just kind of going to be looking like that. And when it comes to his outfit, he's kind of just going to be rocking the same little outfit that he kind of had. Except when it comes to his jacket, he's going to have a white shirt under it with the with the jacket that he normally uses. But it's going to have the little Tokyo Manji sign on it. Not only that, but his pants are just going to be black. And he's going to be wearing these black Air Forces because, of course, the man is drippy. Now, 
That being said though, Naruto would pretty much begin to step into the arena as he has his first match. And this is when Naruto would just jump in there as he would hear his name get called and it would just be on the speaker going, Naruto Uzumaki. Naruto would just jump over the railing and land on the ground as Neji would go down the stairs and just be chuckling the entire time, thinking to himself that this is about to be so easy. Not only does he get the chance to crush the mighty Naruto Uzumaki, but now he gets to do it in front of all these people. Neji is just having a smile on his face and as he goes down Naruto's kind of just sitting there kind of twiddling his fingers just not really knowing what to do and Naruto would kind of just be sitting there like uh kind of bored he would just be thinking about how fast he's gonna he's gonna end things and Neji well Neji would get down there this is when Naruto would pretty much look at Neji as Neji would stand in front of him with a smirk right in his face and Naruto would kind of just be sitting there like uh can I help you with something Neji would look at Naruto as he would just be like, how dare you? He would look at him with an angry, like, smirkish face, and Naruto would kind of just give him a blank expression. Neji would be up close and personal because Neji's thinking that he's about to end this with one fell swoop. And this is when Naruto would just look at Neji as a proctor would just be like, go! And this is when Naruto would immediately, before Neji could even react, throw his leg up into the air as he would proceed to kick Neji by wrapping his leg around his neck like a hook and slamming Neji's head right into the concrete, followed by literally sliding under him and kicking him into the air in a, a Sasuke Lions barrage style. After this, Naruto would quite literally have Neji in the air, not ready for what's about to come, and Naruto would immediately extend out his hand as he would say, Rasengan and smash it straight into Neji's abdominal area. This would cause Neji to pretty much cough out blood as Neji would just land onto the ground about 10 seconds later because he got flung into the air high. And at this point, Naruto would quite literally just have Neji crash onto the ground as he would just cough out blood and Neji would have to get rushed to the to the hospital people immediately. He would be taken to recovery ninjas as it to this point that Naruto would just kind of go back up to the up to the podium and just stand there this is when naruto would kind of just put his hand on his face as he would just be like that was such a bore kakashi would look at naruto with just these eyes of this kid is insane as he would be thinking that naruto has speeds comparable to that of the fourth hokage and at just the age of 13 naruto's a monster to say the least after this sasuke would arrive about 10 minutes late for his battle as we all know and sasuke would proceed to absolutely tear oh wait i said kakashi was there so technically sasuke wouldn't arrive late because if kakashi's there okay we're just gonna say that instead who the person who looked at him was everybody else thinking that he was a monster and then kakashi and sasuke would arrive a little bit later that being said though naruto would pretty much end up just kind of watching sasuke as he completely obliterates gara there's not going to be any little situation where wait no i'm pretty sure i already established that gara was dead i think i'm not sure i think i did oh god i seriously need to know what i'm talking about all right guys give me a second i need to pause the recording and go figure out whether gara is still alive or isn't uh y'all are gonna be triggered Okay, so I went back to my last recording and I figured out, yeah, Gara's dead. He literally got a Chidori straight into his chest. Not only that, but Naruto then proceeded to stomp the man's head in. So, yeah, uh, Gara, that man is a uh, rest in peace. That man is a uh, that man's gone. That being said, though, next thing. So yeah, Sasuke doesn't end up having a fight against Gara. So instead, we're going to be saying that I'm not sure who Sasuke fought the last round, but I'm pretty sure that Rock Lee ended up winning if Gara was not alive. So I'm just going to say that Rock Lee has to fight against Sasuke. That being said, the fight would honestly be incredible. It would start off with Sasuke at a disadvantage, seeing as Rock Lee kind of is a little stronger. Like, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. No, I don't think it would start off with a disadvantage. I think that Rock Lee would be the one to start off with a disadvantage with this Sasuke. See, at first, Rock Lee would be a little overconfident because he still hasn't faced Sasuke yet. But this is when Rock Lee would get a pretty big awakening call, a wake-up call. And Sasuke would land a bunch of blows on Rock Lee, causing Sasuke to get really overconfident. And Rock Lee would just kind of get blown back. This is when Rock Lee would go up to the tower which he was at in the in cannon and drop down his weights. And after this, this is when Rock Lee would basically go into his first gate, knowing that not only will the weights not be enough, but he's going to need more power than that. So Gara would end up, no, not Gara, but Rock Lee would end up going into his first, uh, first gate state. 
And Sasuke would look up at Gaara as he would say, Oh, you think that's gonna do anything? And this is when Rock Lee would blitz behind Sasuke, throwing a thunderous kick, which Sasuke is barely narrowly able to put his arm in front and block, but the kick would have sent Sasuke flying back into a wall. And after this, Gaara would have, or no, I keep messing that up, but Rock Lee would rush in as he would throw uh, a giant kick as he would say, he would say, uh, leave, uh, leave Hurricane, yeah, he would say, leave Hurricane, as he would have rushed in at Sasuke, now, Sasuke would quite literally substitute out of there, as Rock Lee would kick a log, and it's at this point that Rock Lee would jump back, as he would go right into Sasuke, but Sasuke would activate his Sharingan, and this is when Sasuke would finally be able to catch up with Rock Lee, actually overdoing him way more than what Rock Lee is able to do. Rock Lee would start getting pushed back into a corner, as he would decide that he's doing this to show that hard work can beat talent. And this is when Rock Lee would basically say, Fourth gate! Open! As he would forcibly open the fourth gate, Sasuke would widen his eyes as Rock Lee would burst at Sasuke and throw a thunderous uppercut, sending Sasuke into the air as he would then basically wrap around his binding cloth and basically proceed to spiral down as he would say, Primary Lotus! Uh, fourth gate or something like that you know what I mean and this one he would pretty much slam Sasuke down however similar to what happened to Gara, Rock Lee would miss Sasuke was able to substitute out of there just in time actually no nah, I'm not gonna say that Sasuke is more of a G than that Sasuke would free himself out of there and then basically kick Gara off of him, actually reversing it. So he would put uh, Rock Lee in front of him and basically slam Rock Lee into the ground by his knee. At this point, Sasuke would have exerted all of his energy and pretty much just fall back down to the ground. As Sasuke would just be like, <sighs> breathing a little heavily and just thinking that that kid was definitely something. Now, I'm guessing that many of you guys are wondering what stage of the Sharingan Sasuke was using. Well, Sasuke told himself that he was only going to be using the first Tomoe of each Sharingan. So, if you guys thought that Sasuke was going all out, he wasn't. He was holding him back. He was holding back a good, let's say, 30% of his power. So, nothing too crazy, but he was definitely still holding back. So, a good 30% of his power was being held back. And when it comes to that final little part, Sasuke did end up having to go into the three Tomoe Sharingan state. Just because of the fact that if he didn't, he didn't, he probably would have lost. That being said though, Sasuke won the battle, and after this, I bet you guys are probably all wondering what happens with Orochimaru. Well, there was no Gara situation, and so when Orochimaru does the Genjutsu, the destruction that ends up actually happening around them is lessened. Many of the ninjas are actually gonna stay, meaning Naruto and Sasuke stay, and when it comes to the, the ninjas who basically try to attack the citizens, uh, Rock Lee, no, no, not Rock Lee, but Guy Sensei, Kakashi, they basically are the ones who end up helping out with that, and Sasuke ends up just helping out a little bit with them. When it comes to Orochimaru, he would have revealed himself to Hiruzen, and Naruto would have actually jumped in there, actually causing Orochimaru to get a little scared. This is when Naruto would quite literally just look at Orochimaru and tell him that he couldn't die properly, he couldn't even do that. After this, Naruto would just basically look at Hiruzen as he would say, I got this one old man, and Hiruzen would look at Naruto as he would say, ah, oh, whatever. He'd basically just sit there as he would pretty much just say monkey enma and he would summon his uh his, he would use the summoning jutsu to summon monkey king enma and he would throw his staff right at naruto naruto would say it's been a long time since i've used this as Hiruzen would say, knock yourself out, kid. This is when Naruto would grab the staff as he would just basically turn towards Orochimaru and say, uh, I've been waiting to have a little bit of a battle ever since our last bout. As he would quite literally proceed to just say, all right. He would crack his neck and his knuckles as he would look towards Orochimaru and say, you ready? And within an instant, Naruto would be right behind Orochimaru as he would throw a thunderous kick right at the back of Orochimaru's neck, quite literally paralyzing the man from the, from the neck down. And Orochimaru would have to use a, a, a jutsu to regurgitate himself out, which needs no hand signs. Orochimaru would come back out as Naruto would say, Good, I was hoping you didn't die on me too soon. As it's to this point that Naruto would quite literally look towards Orochimaru, as Orochimaru would just be stuck in fear. There is not a thing that he could do. Uh, Orochimaru's four. Um, 
uh, Sound Shinobi's ninjas, his little tree, his little quadruplets, would all drop down the barrier and would rush in as they would try to help Orochimaru. And within the span of an instant, Naruto would immediately have his eyes turn into a slit-like nature as Kurama would start to give Naruto some of his chakra. It's to this point that Naruto would basically be shining with a black, purplish, reddish aura. As it's just covering Naruto, his eyes would turn into a dark black color which is just an abyss an endless void as naruto, naruto within an instant would just blitz at all of them and all of their heads would drop down on the ground naruto would have used that staff to quite literally hit their heads off though it's not a clean slash their heads literally got punched off basically but no they, their heads literally got just smacked off of their head their their bodies right and it's at this point that Naruto would turn his attentions towards Orochimaru, but this is when Orochimaru would reverse summon himself using Manda and go back to the Snake Village. However, Naruto Naruto grabbed onto Orochimaru and followed. And I'm guessing many of you guys are like, yo, what are you doing, Zether? Uh, you're about to find out. So, you know how that three-year journey ended up happening in original where he went with Jiraiya? Let's have something a little different happen. Instead, we're starting off the first couple of months a little different than what happened in canon. Naruto would jump on Manda as Orochimaru and Naruto would be in the snake, uh, the snake sage mode area, and Naruto would blitz at Orochimaru, who thought he was gonna be getting away. Naruto would quite literally end his subscription to living, and Orochimaru would just that man's on a t-shirt man that man that man's dead so i guess we're gonna have to give him one of these rest in peace yeah the man's dead that being said though after this we would of course then have naruto looking up at snake manda as he would just look at him and ask him where he's at manda would explain to him that he's in the village of the snakes and naruto would kind of just smirk and say so what do you guys do why did Hiroshimaru summon you you don't look so strong. Mondo would just look at him and be like, all right, I'm going to eat this kid. As he would proceed to pretty much slither over to Naruto and try to eat him. But Naruto would jump up on top of his head and not shake. Nothing Mondo could do could move Naruto off of himself. As Naruto would look at Mondo and just say, dude, you're kind of fast, but you're pretty weak. Mondo would be pretty angered at this. And this is when a, a small, like, withered old snake would come in and just be like, ugh. What is your name, child? As Naruto would just be like, my name's Naruto Uzumaki. As it's at this point that he would ask him if he wants to learn snake sage mode. And this is when Naruto would be like, sure, why not? As he would just say, I mean, I have nothing better to do. And so for the following next month, Naruto would quite literally focus all of his energy on just learning Snake Sage mode. After this, Naruto would pretty much just begin to be in uh, Mount... I don't think it's it's a mountain. I think it's a snake cave. But yeah, he would be there and just trying to learn the the snake sage mode. I pause the recording real quick. But uh, where was I? Uh, I don't know. Let's just say that yeah, he learned it. And now he has access to snake sage mode. I would normally go into detail on how he learned it and what it is that he think, but what it is that he did. But I honestly have no idea how snake sage mode works. So I'm just gonna say that Naruto masters it in about one month. That being said, Naruto basically is able to reverse summon himself out of there, and after this point, Naruto pretty much ends up just kind of going back to the village. At this point, the village was kind of in a little bit of shambles, and Tsunade had already been brought back by Jiraiya. He ended up going to search for her with Sasuke, seeing as Naruto wasn't going, and Sasuke ended up actually getting a good bond with Jiraiya. That being said, this is when Naruto would return and see Tsunade as the new Hukage, just being like, eh, okay, whatever. And then he would see Sasuke there, as he's like, yo, Sasuke, my boy, as Sasuke just kind of looks at naruto and they dab each other up you know and this pretty much just begins the three year time skip now you guys are probably thinking that naruto took this time to do intense training to go crazy but no the first year naruto quite literally did almost nothing naruto has enough money to just sit on because of the fact that he took out gato and took the gold so he has enough money to not have to do any missions and kind of just live off of that so that's what naruto did he quite literally ate ramen and pretty much did nothing all day so naruto ended up getting a little fat by the end of the first year but at one point sasuke just kind of ended up getting sick of naruto's attitude and told them that dude if he doesn't get his stuff together 
He'll literally kill him. And so Naruto was just like, all right, all right. And then that's when Naruto finally started training. So in reality, he had more like one one year and 11 months to train and so naruto finally ended up using that time to train and by this point naruto now officially looks like the mikey which is in the thumbnail that being said though naruto would have grown way taller and he's now a confident let's say six foot something as well as has this really dope like tattoo on the back of his neck that being said though at this point naruto is an absolute unit the man has learned all five chakra natures the man is now even better at kenjutsu he refined his taijutsu abilities he mastered perfect sage mode now he can tap into it in an instant not only that but during that one year and 11 months he ended up mastering kurama so when it comes to naruto and kurama's relationship kurama pretty much big brothers uh no 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 naruto pretty much big brothers kurama because kurama has to listen to naruto i mean the man is way more powerful than him so it's like yeah what you gonna do about it so yeah he gets all of those boosts and when it comes to the akatsuki that's about to get handled in the span of like 10 seconds i'm telling you guys right now when it comes to the problem of the akatsuki and all that stuff that's not an issue naruto quite literally just proceeds to embark on a on like a couple month journey where he's pretty much just gonna take out the akatsuki with sasuke the first person who they're actually gonna have on their list is going to be itachi uchiha now sasuke and naruto are both kind of just embarking trying to take down the akatsuki seeing as they've kind of been causing the hidden leaf village a couple of, a bit of problems so yeah sasuke and naruto both end up embarking on a quick one month journey to pretty much take care of all of them and this is when sasuke and naruto would both essentially proceed to just go on this journey they would end up going around as the first person who they end up actually finding is actually going to be kakazu and hidan before they end up putting asuma on a t-shirt so asuma lives that's a plus and uh, hidan and kakazu they don't live when it comes to hidan naruto gets pretty angry at the fact that he does not die so he ends up bashing hidan's skull and just being like why won't you die just getting pretty angry at that and when it comes to kakazu sasuke youth kirin and uh i have a feeling that kirin is way stronger than uh the jutsu that naruto used the rasen shuriken so i'm just gonna say that yeah uh kakazu kakazu dies he used a couple of chidoras to take out his first couple of hearts but after realizing that he's gonna need something better than that he ended up just pulling a dragon down from the sky a lightning dragon and completely shitting on kakazu also by the way sasuke has toad sage mode just thought i'd throw that out there he learned that in the first year that naruto didn't do anything and he also learned kirin refine his you know his other stuff and he's pretty much on the same level of like a, a sasuke after the fourth great shinobi war with like three extra years of training with everything uh with the exclusion of the six paths sage mode ability so he doesn't have the renegon and he does have no he does not have the mangeki sharingan yeah he does not have that one yet but he will be getting it very soon that being said yeah kakazu and hidan they get handled pretty easily now they end up going on the journey longer and this is when they end up encountering zabuza no no, no not zabuza i'm tripping what's his name kisame yeah kisume hagakashi i don't know his name but they end up encountering kisame the little shark guy and itachi so when it comes to that battle naruto pretty much just ended up deciding that this battle is 100 percent going to all be sasuke he's not going to be giving any assistance and when it comes to the battle with isasuke and itachi we're going to be covering that one second seeing as that's more of the main event when it comes to zabuza i keep saying zabuza but no kisame versus naruto that battle is actually pretty dope see it only lasts about 20 seconds because at first they both pretty much just end up smiling and rushing at each other naruto and kisame land a couple of sword strikes with each other's blades and they both just end up kind of acknowledging that each of them are you know they're pretty strong in their own respectable right but when it comes to when naruto finally started taking Kis kisame seriously naruto ended up getting bored pretty quick after about the first 15 seconds just saying all right i'm done how about we end this in one fell swoop kisame ended up being pretty overconfident at the fact that he was gonna beat naruto so he didn't even fuse with the sword samehado or anything and he pretty much just ended up blitzing right at naruto they both ended up running at each other's anime swordsman style and when they both slashed at each other and naruto landed on his side and kisame on his own 
they both ended up kind of just uh, looking down at the ground as Kisame's entire body would have turned into tiny little chunks of tuna. And Naruto would have kind of just put his sword back in the sheath as he would have just been like, all right, let's go see how Sasuke is doing. He would put his hands behind his head as he would begin to walk over to Sasuke, just kind of whistling casually as he would arrive there and we would just see Sasuke standing above Itachi. I'm guessing many of you guys are wondering what the battle went like. Of course, it started with a little bit of Genjutsu, but after a while, Sasuke just ended up being like, alright, I'm done playing these little games, and busted out of it, and ended up pretty much proceeding to show Itachi that he was not playing no games. See, in normal canon, we have a situation where Sasuke ended up kind of having to be let win by Itachi, because Itachi was holding back a lot during that battle, even though some people like to say that he wasn't, he was. And in this version, it's a complete opposite. Itachi is getting completely manhandled in every sense of the word. And it's just not funny, man. It, it's not a game. Itachi is getting completely destroyed. The man is quite literally getting bodied in every sense of the word. And when it comes down to him taking out the Susano, that's when Sasuke finally started having some problems. Because normal Jutsu weren't going to do anything. But luckily for Sasuke, he had Kirin. He smashed that dragon down, but when Itachi thought that that was it, Sasuke proceeded to smash down another dragon straight from the sky, and yeah, Itachi Itachi was donezos after that point. At that point, Itachi fell onto the ground with both of his knees on the ground and just tapped Ita Sasuke, telling him that he's sorry, Sasuke, and that he's always going to love him, and after that, Itachi would pretty much die. Sasuke would proceed to quite literally rip out Itachi's eyeballs as he would say that's no brother of mine and he would end up just going over to Naruto as Naruto's like you done Sasuke would just be like yeah pretty much as it to this point that we would see a brown a, a, like an orange mask appear out of nowhere from a spiral pattern as it would go over to Sasuke and tell him Sasuke my name is but before he could even finish that Naruto would quite literally plunge his fist right into Obito's back without Obito being able to sense him Naruto has incredible um, abilities to basically hide his own presence and Naruto was being so nonchalant when he did it so he pretty much shoved his entire fist into Obito which Obito pretty much got a hole in his heart but we all know Obito's not gonna about to die from that and after that Obito would kind of just look at Naruto as he would end up using uh what's that one jutsu called um the one that pretty much lets him come back to life the one that all Uchiha have I honestly forgot the name not too sure but he uses that jutsu which at this moment is I have no idea what it is but yeah he ends up using that jutsu and after this point that's pretty much all that ends up happening uh obito pretty much ends up trying to get away but at this point sasuke he's not playing bro he pretty much tries to shove a chidori into his head but obito phases out of it and ends up getting out of there pretty quickly after that obito would realize yeah those two kids they're trouble naruto and sasuke would end up just kind of being like yup that was the leader right as sasuke is just like yeah his chakra levels were off the chart but nothing compared to ours as they would both just be like it's probably a best bet to go back to the village as at this point a month has passed and they've both kind of just been chilling as as well as looking for the akatsuki members and at this point four of them are currently dead now, Obito would pretty much launch a full-scaled attack on the Hidden Leaf Village, which leads to Pain being like, Shinra Tensei, and blowing up the entire, wait, was it Shinra Tensei? The, uh, the jutsu that he ended up using to blow up the village? I'm not sure, let me check. Nah, I was tripping, it's called the Almighty Push. Yeah, Pain ends up basically arriving up at the top, where he basically just goes, Almighty Push! And right as the push starts to basically destroy buildings, Naruto quite literally is just at his favorite ramen shop, you know what I'm saying? The man is munching away, he's he's enjoying his ramen, you know what I'm saying? He's having a nice afternoon, and I don't know where some guy just comes in and destroys his village. Naruto is blown back a bit, and his ramen bowl spills all over himself. So, Naruto looks down at the ground, and his eyes just go black. His eyes go into that same abyss, except this time, Naruto's rage is unlike any other time beforehand. Naruto stands up as Sasuke just blitzes over to Naruto and is like, is it it's time? Naruto would say not a single word, and in an instant, Naruto would just coat himself with a complete black aura of armor, and he would just blitz straight at uh, um, Pain as he destroys the Prada, uh, the, uh, what, what path is it called? The Prada path? Or no, no, no. 
the diva pass yeah the diva path he destroys it he punches it breaking it completely and proceeds to blitz straight at naruto uh no nagato as he pretty much arrives there and rips nagato's throat out like he grabs it rips it out after that he goes back to the village and proceeds to completely dismantle the rest of the akatsuki members sasuke ends up actually handling obito and naruto just ends up having to handle the rest of the fodder akatsuki members but yeah that's pretty much where what if naruto had black air force energy is going to be ending that is a good place to wrap up the story the akatsuki were handled naruto had to defend his honor and his favorite ramen shop and when it comes to casualties a lot of casualties were were made a lot of people weren't brought back to life but naruto was not about to show no mercy bro his ramen bowl was spilled on him come on now black air force energy means no mercy those people died it was their time that's it Bada bada bing. That's pretty much the end of What If Naruto had Black Air Force Energy, the movie. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to um what's it called don't forget to check out the links down below in my description as well as copy yourself something from fandom. That being said, make sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, as well as hitting the subscribe button with the post notifications. But with that all being said, if you guys enjoyed the video, please comment down below your favorite part. And uh, with that said, I really have nothing else to say. So uh, it has been your boy Zether. I love each and every single one of you guys. And uh, peace. Bye.